What's up guys? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be about monocrystalline versus polycrystalline solar panels. How to choose between them, what are the key differences that you should look into such as price, efficiency, and the overall system production of the solar panels. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the video. So monocrystalline and polycrystalline solar panels are two of the main types of solar panels on the market today. They are the most popular options for residential, commercial, and industrial installations, as well as making your own DIY solar projects. They are both made from silicon solar cells. And both have silver wires printed onto the wafers to allow for electricity to flow once sunlight knocks loose electrons from the silicon atoms. However, they are manufactured differently, leading to a slight differences in factors such as cost and efficiency. Monocrystalline Solar Panels Monocrystalline solar panels have solar cells that are made of a thin wafer of a single crystal of nearly pure silicon. It is expensive to manufacture pure crystals for monocrystalline panels, which is why they cost more than polycrystalline solar panels. But the purity of monocrystalline panels makes them more efficient. The most efficient on the market are currently around 22-24% to efficiency, meaning that they can convert 22-24% to of the light shining on them into usable solar energy. Monocrystalline crystals are arranged in a uniform alignment that absorbs more sunlight and refracts less. Therefore, as a result, monocrystalline solar panels appear black. Polycrystalline solar panels by contrast, polycrystalline solar panels have cells that are made from silicon crystal fragments. The fragments are melded together in an oven and formed into cubes which are then cut into wafers. And as a result, polycrystalline solar panels are cheaper, however, being less efficient. The best polycrystalline solar panels are currently around 17-20% to 20 efficiency. Their being less efficient doesn't mean that they output less power than monocrystalline solar panels. The pros and cons of monocrystalline and polycrystalline cells come down to the basic physical difference. Along with that, the major differences between the two are the price and efficiency. Monocrystalline panels cost about $1 to $1.50 per watt on average, while polycrystalline solar panels, on the other hand, cost about $0.90 to $1 per watt on average. Both types of solar panels require framing, wiring, and for residential solar panels, you need inverters, for which the cost will be the same. Monocrystalline solar panels convert sunlight more efficiently than polycrystalline, that they range from 20 to 24% efficiency for monocrystalline compared to 17 to 20% for the polycrystalline, which also leads to the greater the temperature coefficient, the less power the solar panel will output as it heats up. Emerging technologies like perovskite, organic cells, and quantum dots are reaching levels of efficiency in research labs that may someday allow them to replace silicon solar panels altogether. So now the main question is, which one is the right fit for you, monocrystalline or polycrystalline panels? In general, monocrystalline panels cost more, but they're also more efficient, so they provide more electricity per square meter. Often, the extra price of monocrystalline panels is about the same as their extra efficiency, so you do get your money's worth if you spend more. And therefore, monocrystalline panels are also a bit more durable, so they can give you the more power over a longer lifetime. The main factors to consider when deciding between monocrystalline and polycrystalline modules are the price, space, climate, durability, and appearance. If you're only considering price in your decision, do a simple calculation to determine the cost per year of each type of solar panel over the lifespan. Figure out how many panels of each type you would need and total up their costs. Also note that the performance warranty as a proxy for the expected lifespan. Next up is available mounting space. If you have a limited mounting space, monocrystalline panels are a better option due to their higher efficiency and better power per square foot ratio. But if you have loads of empty space to install solar panels such as ground mounting or installing them on a large roof, then you can go for a cheaper polycrystalline panels. Next is climate. On average, a monocrystalline panel will be more efficient in higher temperatures than a polycrystalline panel will be. The higher the year-round temperatures, the more the buying monocrystalline panels is a smart decision since temperature coefficient differences begin to add up. 
To match the power output of a monocrystalline panel in high temperatures, you will need to purchase a bigger polycrystalline panel, raising your costs even more. Next up is durability. Because of the simple structure, monocrystalline panels are more durable, less susceptible to degradation from heat, and exposure to UV light. The average warranty on monocrystalline panels is up to 30 years, while polycrystalline panels are more likely to be warranted for 25 years. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else I should do in the next video. And I'll see you again. Take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.